Good morning. I'm Ben Katzen and welcome to Daybreak with a Naturalist. Today we're here at Johnson's Mound as part of our Nature Virtually Everywhere series of programming where we bring you uh, online programs to enjoy from anywhere. Uh, please join me as we check out a little bit about the history and uh, the plants and animals that can be found at one of my favorite preserves here near uh, Elburn, Illinois, right off of Hughes Road. So join me as we look at the shelter and talk about how it has ties with local and the forest preserves history. Nearby Elburn had a church and still does, St. Gall Church, which was originally built in 1870. Around 1925, the church was demolished, and 1925 happened to be the same year that the Forest Preserve was established. Johnson's Mound being the first, one of the first among them. The stone that was salvaged from the original St. Gall Church was used to build this shelter, along with the one at Elburn Forest Preserve. So this is a special place. It's been a forest preserve for quite a while. And we're going to talk about other reasons it's special. Around otherwise flat Illinois, we have this big mound appearing seemingly out of nowhere. It gives us a real insight into Illinois' geologic history, and we'll talk about that shortly. But first, let's go up these stone steps and see where it takes us. So we look around at the beautiful mature oak walnut trees that lie atop Johnson's Mound. A lot of people ask and are under the misconception that Johnson's Mound is the highest point in Kane County. And I don't blame them rising about 200 feet higher than the lowest elevations near the Fox River but it's actually not the case. We are approaching the peak of Johnson's Mound, which is gonna bring us to about 898 feet above sea level. The Fox River is somewhere around 700 feet above sea level. All right, we are at the peak. The highest point in Kane County is actually in Plato Township on Tower Road. And that point is 1,066 feet above sea level. The county kind of slopes down eastward as you approach the Fox River. We are gonna go explore the trails and see what's happening out here in this early June morning. So grab a cup of coffee and join me. As you can see, lots of lush vegetation. We'll try to zoom in on something here. Lots of jewel weed or wild impatience at Johnson's Mound. This time of year, there's a few types of ground vegetation that dominate. We'll inevitably run into the other one shortly. Surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of poison ivy, at least where we're at in the preserve. All right, we're going to go around the steps this time. Here we have some new tree regeneration projects. There is some uh, tales in the history that they used to let cows graze up here. So... Some of these trees, the old trees, may be leftover shade trees from the pasture. All right, as we go into the woods, we're going to talk a little bit more about Johnson's Mound geologic history. And we have some hints right here. Now, the woods are beautiful but I'm gonna pan down here and give you a look at what the trail is made of. Lots of gravel. 
and there's a larger stone, a cobblestone. Now the Forest Preserve did not put this here. And I hope my orientation as well. But what that rock and gravel represent are the glacial till that makes up Johnson's Mound. This used to be a glacier, or I'm sorry, a glacier used to reside over this area and developed what is known as a came. Those gl uh, glaciers were full of gravel and rocks. And as the glacier melted, or in this case is a boulder or a hole formed in the glacier, all the rocks and gravel and soil that were picked up were washed down and formed some sort of mound. Now the lighter debris was washed away or even blown away to create the flat surrounding lands, which are formed as sedimentation at the bottom of a glacial meltwater lake. But the heavier material like the rocks stones, gravel, boulders, even clay, which is a small particle, but as you know, gets clumpy and wouldn't travel far from the melting glacier. They get deposited in these uh, land formations. Here again, we have the came. Another example is an esker. When the glacial water is melting off, the runoff that carries that debris or the till forms these thin, wispy lines or ridges in the landscape. The other example would be a moraine, which usually forms at the terminal or end of the glacier, which is like a long row or mound. These glacial outwash areas provide great habitat for woodlands. The clay, the rocks, and the subsurface often retains more water than the surrounding uh, flat old prairie lands. So the trees uh, have a better time establishing and growing. And they've uh, formed relationships with these understory flowers. Now we're very close to summertime. So most of our spring wildflowers have already bloomed and we're seeing some of the remnants. Here are some flower bulbs, wild onion. This is a really nice plant to see, an indicator of a high quality woodland, but this is Joe Pieweed, which will get six, seven feet tall with an enormous flower bundle, which uh, butterflies love. And here we have a uh, bottle brush grass. Bottle brush hasn't formed yet, but it's a beautiful native grass that can grow in our shady woodlands. Let's see, hope you see me or see the trail well. Another great thing out here are our ash trees. There is a huge diversity of trees out here. And as I feel the stem, I don't know if you could see that, it has a squarish nature. And that tells me that this plant with compound leaves opposite is a blue ash. I'm seeing the other plant that dominates the woodland uh, in summertime, and it is this one. Now, I don't know if you could see the stem. See those uh, spiky hairs? Well, if you were wearing shorts and went through this, uh, you might feel a stinging sensation. Those hairs have a chemical that 
creates a burning irritation in the skin. <clears throat> I can tell that this leaf is a little bit broader than its uh, closely related cousin, and that tells me that this is woodland nettle, a cousin of stinging nettle, and pretty much has the same effect. But luckily that sting goes away in about 15 or 20 minutes and usually doesn't leave any lasting scars. Here's a remaining woodland wildflower. Count the petals there. We have our uh, blue phlox. A weed that grows around here looks similar to that, Dame's Rocket, <clears throat> which can become pretty dense. Seeing lots of choke cherry as well. Two pretty conspicuous types of bark here. You could see the big uh, cubes or chunks of bark with these furrows and cracks. They don't really form uh, lines, they kind of get broken up like this. And that tells me this is a walnut tree. Next to it is a tree with also very distinctive bark. You can see the ridges. These are actually called corky protuberances. This is a tree that prefers uh, moist conditions. Give you a close look at the leaf. They are in a zigzag arrangement, so uh, alternate. They're kind of tapered somewhat broad and tapered with irregular teeth or dentation. This is a hackberry. This is one of my favorite trails in the county atop uh, Johnson's Mound. It's very peaceful. You can't see roads or hear much traffic. Can't see any cell towers and it's a haven for birding. It's so another interesting feature. We could look at this big tree trunk we're approaching and notice that scar. We're gonna follow up, 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 up. I guess one disadvantage of being atop Johnson's Mound is uh, being closer to lightning strikes. And this tree fell victim, although it's none the worse for wear. Typically, the lightning will travel on the outside of a tree and just kind of scar or burn off a strip of bark. However, there are instances if it's a direct hit and the tree is full of sap, uh, trees have been known to explode. Hear the critters uh, running in the woods. This trail does become a little more unpassable as the summer progresses. Looks like we have a down tree in the way. Part of nature. Yeah, nothing unhealthy about uh, having downed trees. It's just part of the way the woods transform. 
uh, old tree will fall and then young saplings that are growing in the area will race up and try to fill the void. The opening in the canopy that allows more sunlight in. In 1980, the Forest Preserve began adding properties, farmland that surrounds this mound. The reason being is to put a buffer to help uh, keep developments or other uh, things that could compromise the the pristine quality of this preserve. We are back at the drive. And I do want to mention that I like to call this a drive through preserve. Although we do want you to get out and stretch your legs, we are aware that some people are not able to. So if you have trouble with mobility, you're able to drive through and still get a beautiful tour of the woodland. We're approaching the peak again, and here you can see the ravines and a downhill shot. Again, lots of wood nettle, lots of jewel weed. Let's see, I don't see any flowers yet. I guess the jewel weed flowers here come out a little later but it's lining the road. They have pretty curious seeds that will pop or burst open with a little spring-like mechanism inside, and that's their seed dispersal method. We do a scavenger hunt, and we call those shooters because they shoot the seeds out, along with witch hazel and uh, jump seed or knotweed, which also could be found around here. It's a little feature, a little bulge in this tree or burl. Sometimes a tree will get infected and the wood grain will become irregular or it would form what you could call a scab. And the ball, uh, sometimes it hurts the tree, sometimes it doesn't. This tree does happen to be dead, but many trees with burls live a long time. And they're highly sought after for that fancy wood grain. Uh, they could be turned into a bowl or a tabletop with a very unique look. I also should mention the sled hill that is here at Johnson's Mound. One of the biggest attractions during the winter. Uh, years ago, the Forest Preserve took advantage of this hill and made a sledding hill that's open to the public. Let's see this tree. A 
another sugar maple. There is another type of maple that's common out here, the black maple. It has a little more pointed leaves than this one. Okay, we are approaching the peak. Well, we've come full circle and are back at the top of Johnson's Mound. Again, I want to thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live Nature Virtually Everywhere presentation. And please keep posted on our Facebook page to look for other uh, new and exciting programs. Take care and have a great day.